Good morning, Kevin here. And Steve's with me. Morning. Unfortunately, Cynthia can't be with us. Um, she's having to look after her husband who's not very well at the moment. So Steve and I have come out on our own. And we are here in Headley. And we're at All Saints Parish Church. And we're standing by the side of the Lich Gate. And Steve was saying that this was put up to commemorate the Queen's coronation. And it doesn't say a year, does it? Yeah, 53. Oh, oh yes, it does. 1953. 1953, and it was restored in 2015. So we're right, as, as we say, right by this Lich Gate, which is rather nice. Big, chunky oak, lovely, under a tiled roof. So shall we have a look in? Yep. Let's have a wander. So we're by the south porch at the moment. We'll have a carry on round the outside. And again, the porch is built of oak and stone. But there, there used to be a spire. Uh, unfortunately, it got burnt down in 18... 1836. So they probably didn't bother rebuilding I've just created the parapet around the top. You can see where the stonework has been infilled. This is rather interesting. Stained glass windows. It'd be nice to see on the inside of those. And we've got a plaque here on the side wall. East Hampshire Conservation and Design Award, oh, 1997. A variety of headstones, as you often see in, in these cemeteries. So let me just have a move back away from the church a bit, <clears throat> so we can bring in the tower in its full size, but. You can see at the top of the tower that is the the actual stonework's not been sort of infilled. As Steve and I have gone, you know, wandering around the outside, I've just noticed that the clock is facing east, and it's the only clock face on the on the tower, which is strange because it's just totally out of sight. Very unusual. Oh, Steve's got some info about that. That's good. If you can find it, he says. Yeah. The clock was given to Sir Robert Watt Wright of Headley Park in memory of his son, Evan Stanley, who died in 1900 at the age of six. Oh, right. The initial of his parents and child and the date are on the four corners. So let's see if we can spot that on the four corners of the clock face. <coughs> Oh yes, they are as well. 1900, yeah. Well, I'm blown. But a strange place to put it, but on the, well, it's not a visible no, that's thing. Right. That's right. But again, you can see that the the tower is 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 completely rendered in, which is a shame. And Steve said that when the when the fire happened, it burnt the gallery on the inside of the church as well. So there was a lot of restoration work had to be done. So we might be able to get a, some sort of an idea of when we get inside the church of what they've actually done. But it is a bitterly cold day. My hands are getting really cold. <laughs> Steve and I are just going to have a wander around the graveyard now because unfortunately the church is locked. We've got a lovely area here which we think is for people that have been cremated because there's lots of different plaques and that on the wall and perhaps our ashes are scattered here big signpost there but it looks to me I don't know if I'm correct or wrong but there's something in here oh it's a little yeah there's another plot for Cremations. They all seem to have little markers and pots on the graves. So that's a set, another separate area. 
But Steve was saying that they've actually now decided that the graveyard is full and they're going to stop burials here. You can still come and tend the graves uh, and look after them, but um, no more burials. Look at this large memorial here. It's huge. Can't see the name on there. Helen Maxfield Hahn. Hahn? H A H N. Hahn. It's an unusual name. Remember, it's Edward Ianson, Esquire. Now, why does that name ring a bell? Of Greyshot Park. Headley, born July the 5th, 1811, died January 30th, 1888. Ianson, why does that name? That name definitely rings a bell to me. Ianson. Hang on. President of the Royal Institute of British Architects. Now that could be the reason why I know it. Because of architecture and being in the... Um, some significance, I think, to do with London. I can't remember now. We'll have to look into that one. And it's of an Edward Horton Phillips DSO, Major 28th Battery RFA, 8th of November 1914. But then in front of it, we've got this. And it said this cross stood for 10 years in the cemetery of Bethune, France. It was damaged in the bombardment of 1918. <coughs> Can't see that, it's all covered up, unfortunately. But that's interesting, so he must have been a local person to have brought this back here. But some of the, as Steve said, some of these graves are obviously very old. There's one here with the iron railings around it. But we're going to have a wander along here because over in this corner there's another huge part of the cemetery. There's big headstones that have been set along the side of the wall over there. <clears throat> so let's have a wander around here. But it is bitterly cold. And then the grave, there's a footpath goes all the way down through. Gosh, it goes all the way down there. We'll have to have a look down there as well. But look at this, it's just, it's just, it seems to be endless. I did want to have a look at this headstone here. It's rather lovely. Courtnage family. But if you go down this way, it is, it's, it's just unbelievable. That one I would think is something to do with the Navy. John Edward Parrish. Vice Admiral, yeah, Vice Admiral for that one. And while Steve and I are actually filming this bit, I turned round and I saw this gravestone. An old friend of mine, Kenny Ayres, same age we were, we went to youth club together. And I knew Kenny had died in, in some years ago, 2012. Um, but to actually turn round and see, <coughs> oh, excuse me, to see his head, his gravestone, that's rather lovely. There's Bless him. Ayres here. Oh, probably, yeah, re re definitely related. Yeah. Age 60, that was in. Age uh, 66? 69. 69, yeah. Well, Steve and I, we noticed a church centre? Church, church centre, yeah, opposite. Uh, opposite the church, so we said, let's just go and have a, have a word in there, see if they've got the key. So we go into the office, the lady who's the clerk, we know her, 
in fact, Steve's wife turns out went to school with her, which is quite amazing. And then there's another chap in there, Paul, who we both know, and talking to the lady in there. And what has she given us, Steve? The key to the, the church. The key to the church. So we are going to be able to go into the church. But we've got to be out fairly quickish. So they're going to be over at one o'clock preparing for a funeral. Do yes, please do, Steve. Fantastic. Can I see a pregnancy? Oh, quite dark. So Steve and I are now inside the church. And luckily, there's a gentleman who knew where the um, lights were, and he's in here practicing on the organ, as you can probably hear, which is lovely to have that going. And we've got these beautiful stained glass windows, just look at this. The walls are all painted. And that's rather interesting. I don't know whether we can see what that is or who it is. No, can't read that at all. But let me just pan round and show you this. And let me just have a walk down through the central nave and just to my left hand side, we've got this lovely font. Again, he's got these huge, huge plaques on the wall. And when I look up into the ceiling, just look at the size of these timbers. Beautiful, lovely, the way it's been done. So of course, we've got to be a little bit more respectful with the gentleman playing. And there's these rather interesting stone plaques here. This stone was placed here in 2000 by Headley people in gratitude of George Holm. The gentleman did say that he said, you, as long as you don't mind some mistakes, which is fine. Got the pulpit there. And we got this wooden screen across the, as you enter the chancel. lovely having the organ music playing you've got to have you've got to be more respectful of course but it does make it a little bit more difficult when you're actually trying to film and give and give um, information out this is uh, to the men of uh, the parish that uh, died in 1914 18 and just look at them how many there were gosh I'm actually just looking at this plaque again and just look at this look bud three from the same family um canes two i saw another one three from the earl family look mackenzie's two marshall's two and this is just you know the family's being almost wiped out roger's family too it's incredible that so many men from one family would go off to war and they just didn't come back. 
Glaciers, two. Gardeners, two. Mondays, two. It's just incredible. All these people are from the same, these, these men are from the same families. These are brothers going off to war together and they didn't come back. It's really, really sad to see that. The Kemp family, look, another two. The more you look, the more you see from the same family. Very, very sad. And I don't think I've ever seen that in memorials before where so many people, you see it occasionally, but on one, one memorial stone, that is quite incredible. Steve's just pointed these out. There's one there, male and female, brasses, and they were from 1510. 1510, 1510, yeah. incredible. And does it give any, any names or? No, no, no names. Cool. No. <clears throat> if you've enjoyed this video on Kevin's Rambles YouTube channel, why not give him a subscribe and a like and comment on his videos? be very much appreciated.